So you're coming to Madrid and you're wondering how to use the metro system to get around. I know it can be daunting to be in a new city and use public transport. So today we're going to give you the confidence and knowledge you need to use the metro system when you're here. And we're going to answer your most common questions like one, is the metro safe? Two, is the tourist card really worth it? And three, we're going to give you our favorite way of getting from the airport to the center of Madrid and back and no, it's not taking the metro. All right, let's go. So let's start with the basics. Okay, the metro is made up of 12 lines that crisscross throughout the city, and each line has a number and a color. But really, we name the lines after their number. So line five, Linea Cinco. And also the network is divided into zones. There's zone A, B1, B2, but as a tourist, you're only really gonna be using zone A in the center of the city, so you don't have to worry about the others. And heads up, the metro is not 24 hours. It runs from about 6.30, in the morning to about 1.30, well, in the morning, the following morning. And the trains are really frequent, so at peak times it's anywhere from every three to six minutes they'll come past, and at off-peak times it's 10 to 15 minutes. But what you really want to know is how to buy a ticket and which ones we recommend. And so Yoli's going to walk you through that. Let's go. But before we go and buy a ticket, you need to know that there are no paper tickets in the Madrid Metro. All your tickets will be stored in this card, the Tarjeta Multi or Multi card. It costs €2.50 and it's very easy to get. So let me show you how to get it and load it. So when you get down to the belly of the station, you'll see a bank of machines that all look a bit similar, but a bit different. The main difference is that the big ones take cash and card, including contact lace, while the skinny ones are card only. And if this is your first time, you want one that says multi aquí. That's where you can buy the multi card. A few people asked about discounts for senior citizens and young people. To access those, you need a personal card with your photo on it. That's really for people who are here for an extended time. We'll link to the info below. So first up, change the language to English, drop your multi-card in if you already have one and want to load it, or if you need to buy one for the first time, hit purchase transport card. Then you'll see you have a few options. One journey, 10 journey, airport, and tourist ticket. The airport supplement is a three euro per person supplement you have to add to your card to get to or from the airport. If you go with the 10 journey, you'll have a choice and you probably want the Metrobus option. This will let you ride anywhere in zone A on the Metro Plus, will work on the city bus system. And a little hack, you can add two 10 trips to your card, giving you 20 rides. Then just pay with your phone or credit card and grab your multi-card when it pops out. Also, just as an aside, be sure to leave your metallic balloons at home. Those are banned on the metro. So, which is the best ticket to choose? Let's cross life to James. Well, it depends. The single journey is just for one journey and it costs anywhere between one euro 50 to two euros, depending on how many stations you're gonna go through. And it has to be used on the day that you purchase it. Meanwhile, the 10 trip is only six euros 10. It's for anywhere in zone A. You can also use it on the bus system and you can share it between people. That's only 61 cents a ride. It's a great deal. But how about that tourist card? Look, it sounds like a great deal but beware okay yeah you get unlimited travel within zone a for example on the metro for one to seven days it also includes the buses and some suburban railway it also includes the price of the multi-card and it includes the airport supplement but you can't share it between people but i think for most tourists unless you're going to be using public transport really intensely i think the 10 trip actually provides more flexibility and may end up being a better deal okay so let's get back to yoli's grand tour and show you how to actually navigate the metro system once you're inside. You'll see maps on the station walls. Plus, there are paper maps available at the information booths. But beware, once you unfold it, you'll be unable to neatly fold it again. Plus, there are a couple of apps that are useful for planning your metro ride, which James will show you later. To get anywhere on the metro, the key information you need is to know what line the stop you want to go to is on and in what direction you need to go to get there. And then all the signs in the metro are organized around the lines and the last stop on that line is how you know the direction you're going. So swipe as you go through the ticket barrier. And if you're sharing your multi-car 
heart like a pro, then boom, pass it back to your loved one. And if you're with kids under four, they're free and go straight through with you. Unfortunately, you can't just make contactless payments at the turnstile, though it is coming. And if you see these signs, that's the commuter train system, which is very difficult to use. There are even blogs about how confusing it is. And so that would be its own video. But no, you can use it to get to day trip destinations like Aranjuez, El Escorial, or Alcalá de Henares. Also, as you head to your platform, you'll find helpful signs with all the upcoming stops on that line in the direction you're going. Use this to see how many stops till your stop and also which lines intersect with this line, which is helpful if you need to change lines. And throughout the network, if a station is marked with a wheelchair, it means there are elevators, which, bonus, are usually relatively clean. Okay, I need to raise my voice, so I'll now pass things over to Jane. Thanks, Yoli. So once you're on the platform, just be cool, or actually be hot. Unfortunately, there's no air conditioning on the platforms, but hang in there, it shouldn't be too long. You'll see the next train announced on the screen above you. Plus, unlike in some cities, two lines never use the same platform. That means that any train that passes is your train. When the doors open, be sure to stand back and let people get off the train before leaping on. Also, be aware of the gap. It's sometimes bigger in curved stations and you don't want to be like this guy. Ouch! Once you're on the train, note there is reserved seating for those who need it. If you're traveling with a pet dog, then you have to go in the last wagon and they can't travel at certain rush hour times on weekdays. Also, they need to wear a muzzle, even if they're cute like this guy. If you have a bike like this happy lady or this even happier couple, then first of all, let us know your secret. And second of all, you have to travel in the first or last wagon with your bike. We'll link below for more information about traveling with cute dogs and large bikes. And you'll be happy to know that while the platforms are not air conditioned, the wagons are. Which is great if, like when we moved to Madrid, you don't have aircon at home and this is the only place in summer where you can actually stand to hug each other. To know when your stop is coming up, you can check the list of stops above the doors, which is also a great way to see the connecting lines at each station. Once you get to your destination, the doors in the newer trains will open automatically, while some of the old the ones need a little human intervention. Work that wrist. And once you get off on the platform, you'll see signs to other lines that connect at the station if you need to make a change to get to your destination. Note that you don't have to pay again to change lines. Follow the salida signs for the exit and the wheelchair signs for the elevators if it's an accessible station. As you go up the escalator, make sure to stand on your right to let the more energetic people pass. Or if you're one of those energetic people, let us know your secret and then passively aggressively stand behind anyone loyal on the left and say in your best Spanish, perdona. And you don't need to swipe again to get out. Just glide through like the god or goddess you are. For the person who asked if there are toilets in the metro, I'm afraid not. And even if there were, I'm sure you wouldn't want to use them. As you leave, you'll see signs indicating the best exits to use depending on where you want to go. And you'll also find a street map of the area with the metro exits marked to better orientate you. Just quickly, I've written a city guide called Madrid Revealed. Inside, you'll find all my favorite tapas bars and restaurants. There's museum hacks, neighborhood guides, even tips on avoiding scams. Plus, there are transport tips, including the metro, buses, airport transfers, and so much more. And the best part, you'll also get access to my exclusive Google Map, which plots all my top spots. So you can have all my recommendations in your pocket when exploring Madrid. Download it via the link in the description below. Okay, let's get back to the video. So is the metro safe to use? Look, overall, it is very safe to use. There are security guards, it is brightly lit, and there's always lots of people around you. Plus there are intercoms if you need help. But there is one issue that you need to be aware of. You guessed it, pickpockets. They are likely to strike on busy trains or maybe say that you're going up the escalators with your bag behind you. So just be aware of your surroundings, your bag always in front and nothing in your back pockets and you should be fine. Okay, and so which apps should you be using to plan your metro rides and generally plan getting around the city? Well, obviously the first one is Google Maps and it's integrated with the metro system. Okay, so you open Google Maps and you'll see the center here. You can see the different metro stops. So if I hit on Gran Vía, I can see the lines that connect with Gran Vía and I can see the trains that are coming up. Say I wanna go from Gran Vía to the Soroya museum. So I can see that that's going to be on line one or line five. So here's the key information I need. It's line five and the direction, i.e. the last stop on the line is Alameda de Suna. So I'm going to follow signs for line five, Alameda de Suna when I'm in the metro. I can see it's three stops. Then down here, I can see the best exit to get out on. 
and there it is. So super easy. But there's also another app called City Mapper, which more or less has the same functionality of Google Maps, plus it has a few extra features. Okay, and City Map is very similar, a little bit of a different interface. What I like here is you can hit this button, Metro, and it shows you the metro stops that are around you. You can see down here, the metro stop, the lines that are there, the different directions, and you can see when the upcoming trains are. How this works is you just say where you wanna go. So if I wanna go to La Castella, great tapas bar, uh, in the Ibiza neighborhood, it's giving me bus options, and I can see I can take the metro on line two. What I like about City Mapper is it also gives you quite extensive uh, other options for walking, scooters, cabs, and everything. So it's a little more beefed up than, than Google Maps in that sense, so if I hit Line two here, gives me the best entrance to get onto at that metro stop, tells me to go to the platform, tells me the best wagon to get on that's gonna be least busy, the front wagon, so that can be handy sometimes. And then three stops, and then the best exit to get out. And if you search the app store and find the official metro app, don't bother with it. Apart from having a digital version of the paper map, it's pretty worthless and well deserving of its two and a half stars. So we've got a number of questions about what is the best way to get from the airport to the center of Madrid. If you're feeling a little flush and you want to treat yourself, you can get a taxi from any of the terminals to the center of the city, and that's a 30 euro maximum fee. They can't charge you more as long as you're going into the area inside the M30 ring road. And that applies to getting back to the airport as well from the center. But just a heads up, that 30 euro flat fee does not apply to Uber rides. And you can also use the Metro to get from the airport to the center of the city. But to be honest, it is not my preferred option. Here's the thing, line eight, which is the line, the Metro line that connects to the different terminals, doesn't get you that far into the center. It stops at Nuevos Ministerios, which is a, a Metro station kind of a little bit further to the north, which means that you've got to change lines maybe once, maybe twice with all your bags to really get into the center of the city. So generally we don't use the Metro when we're getting to and from the airport. But here's the transport method we do use and we do recommend when you're trying to get into the center from the airport and back to the airport again. And that's the Airport Express Bus. It's a bus that runs from Atocha Station all the way to the different terminals and back again. It runs 24 hours a day, about every 15 minutes during the day, a little, little less uh, in the middle of the night. And it's just so much easier. Plus it has a stop here in Cibeles, which is right in the center, so you can grab it here. And what I love is you don't have to worry about airport supplements. You know, did I load it on my card? You can just pay and go with your phone. It's contactless payments as you board the bus. It is so much easier. So that's the one that I would use. Also, somebody recently recommended to me Welcome Pickups. They offer private airport transfers with vetted English-speaking drivers at really competitive rates. Your driver will be waiting with a sign with your name on it at the arrivals gate so you feel like a star. It's all prepaid, plus the driver tracks your flight and adjusts accordingly. Check the link in the description below for more info. Getting around Madrid is hungry work, so next, why not check out this video with 11 of our favorite tapas bars, restaurants, and pastry shops that you need to visit while you're here. See you over there in a moment.